this self-driving car is gonna slam on the brakes before you even notice the accident. How'd it do that? We're gonna dive into self-driving cars, how they drive, how they can drive themselves, what technology they're using, and why it's changing the shape of automotive travel. People had self-driving transportation even before the car. They called it a horse. And funny as it is, horses tend to stay on track. Some of the very first explorations of self-driving was drive-by-wire, or the ability to drive a car with a radio frequency. So they would connect a car steering wheel and the gas pedals to radio control and allow a driver from a secondary position to be able to steer the car. That's how some of these commercials were made. If the manufacturer could equip every car with an automatic driving mechanism, the car would always do just what it should do when it got out on the road. With such a driving control, the car wouldn't pull away from the curb without signaling or looking back for oncoming traffic. With such a driving control, the car would keep in line instead of weaving in and out of traffic. It would always obey boulevard stop signs. Now, while these techniques allowed technology to steer the car, to brake the car, and to start the car, they weren't really autonomous. Some of the early explorations in autonomy were actually putting sensors into the road itself. These were metallic strips or magnets into the road itself to allow the car to spot the magnets and to follow that magnetic trail or that electrical trail to know whether it should steer left or right. These explorations into wired autonomy uh, went on for many years, but it wasn't until computers got smaller. In the early days of automobiles, computers were massive and you couldn't even control or fit a computer into a car that was just unreasonable. But over the years, computer technology got smaller and smaller. One of the early explorations of autonomy in a vehicle was with the Stanford cart. The Stanford University had a cart that was used in exploration of both computer science and moon landing missions. As an extension to the radio control, they started to see if the robot could follow a line, and even further, if the robot could be taught to recognize objects. The camera on the cart was able to move left and right, and by moving, it was able to simulate how our eyes work. It made a number of calculations and was able to estimate the depth and location of objects and then navigate a path through those objects. I've sped up the video here, but the actual process took hours and hours. But over the years, the technology has improved and progressed. In 2004, DARPA, the U.S. Department of Research and Projects, held its first grand challenge, a competition to award a cash prize to the team that could autonomously drive across the desert. The contest, and many that followed, helped lay the foundation for much of the technology we see in today's cars. While today's self-driving cars are much more complicated and they have many more sensors, those core concepts of perception, navigation, and control are really what drive self-driving cars today. I'm driving in a Tesla Model S and it has many sensors, many cameras, but it's using those same concepts. It's using those cameras to perceive the world, calculate and estimate the distances of various objects. And it's going further to detect what some of those objects are and how we interact with them. So it has eight cameras all around the car, allowing it to see in all different directions. It also has 12 ultrasonic sensors that allow it to detect objects that are really close. In addition, it has a forward-facing radar that allows it to see through fog and other obstructions. Now, the way that self-driving cars see is they use those cameras to detect objects. They take thousands of pictures and video, instantaneously transforming those and recognizing objects in the frame. And this is all done through artificial intelligence. What is commonly done is training artificial intelligence to recognize certain objects. So you take thousands and thousands of hours of video and you label that video with very specific information of what is a center line, what is a tree, what is a stoplight, what is a turn signal, what is a car. So we, a human typically goes into an image and using a mouse annotates the lane line markings. So here's an example of an annotation that a human could create a label for this image. And uh, if you ask the fleet, if you just do a naive job of this and you just ask for images at random, the fleet might respond with images like this. Then if you show the neural network this image, that network might make a prediction that is incorrect. It might say that, okay, well, I've seen lots of times on highways, lanes just go forward, so here's a possible prediction. <clears throat> and of course, this is very incorrect. There's no mechanism by which we can just tell the neural network, hey, those lane line markings actually matter. The only tool in the toolbox that we have is labeled data. 
So what we do is we need to take images like this when the network fails, and we need to label them correctly. So in this case, we will turn the lane to the right. And then we need to feed lots of images of this to the neural net. And neural net over time will accumulate, will basically pick up on this pattern that those things there don't matter, but those lane line markings do, and we'll learn to predict the correct uh, lane. This allows the artificial intelligence in the car to actually make decisions on what those objects are, what their likely velocity is, and then make a pathway, make a plan in terms of how it's going to drive to avoid them. This basically is showing what's happening today in the car, and we're continuing to push this forward. So we start with a single neural network. We see the detections around it. We then build all that together with multiple neural networks and multiple detections. We bring in the other sensors, and we convert that into what Elon calls a vector space, an understanding of the world around us. And this is something where, as we continue to get better and better at this, we're moving more and more of this logic into the neural networks themselves. And the obvious end game here is that the neural network looks across all the cars, brings in all the information together, and just ultimately outputs a source of truth for the world around us. And this is actually not like an artist rendering in many senses. This is actually the output of one of the debugging tools that we use on the team every day to understand what the world looks like around us. Now, in the beginning of this video, where you saw the clip where the car stopped before you even noticed there was an accident, it was using its forward-facing radar to actually bounce a signal underneath the car in front of it. So it was looking two cars ahead, and it was able to see that two cars ahead, something that looked like a vehicle had completely stopped. And when it knows that a vehicle is completely stopped, it knows that it needs to stop as well, otherwise it'll crash into it. Now, in addition to some of the sensors that I talked about, another common sensor that's used in self-driving cars is a technology called LiDAR. It's a technology that's found in the latest version of the iPad, and it can tell you the distances to objects. It's a different type of technology. It's sometimes more expensive, and there's a hot debate in the self-driving community whether LiDAR is necessary or if self-driving cars can be built using just cameras alone. And, uh, and LiDAR points are a much less information rich uh, environment. So as an example on the left here, um, is that a plastic bag or is that a tire? A, a LiDAR might just give you a few points on that, but vision can tell you which one of those two is true, and that impacts your control. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand, and, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. <laughs> doomed. While some may not agree with Elon on LiDAR, what we can agree on is that the future of transportation is going to change forever. In addition to Tesla, companies like Waymo, GM Cruise, Ford, Argo AI, Baidu, Apple, Daimler, BMW, Audi, Volkswagen, Lyft and Uber are all working to make those visions of our future ride safer and more autonomous. I'm Greg Reyes. I love talking about entrepreneurship, technology and design. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.